The water inlet tube has an O-ring on top of it that's supplied with the water pump. And you want to just take that O-ring off of there, use a use a pick or some sort of you know, a small screwdriver or something. And just take this off of here before you install it. Install the new O-ring. Try not to stab yourself in the process. It's pretty easy to do. And feed the new one on there. Again, no gasket sealer. You don't need it. And we'll just take this and you thread it right into its spot. Right on top of the water pump there. Go ahead and snug down the water inlet. Again, be careful. Don't get the radiator. The radiator is expensive. Snug it down good and tight. Next thing we have to do, we have to install the sensor. A little bit of, just a little bit of Teflon tape, and we'll put it right back in its respective spot. Go ahead and finger tighten it, and then once you once you got it finger tight, snug it down with a three quarter inch wrench. Now you want to reinstall the plug. It goes to the temperature sensor, and you want to put the hose back on the inlet here. It goes to the heater core. Make sure that the clamp is down nice and tight. And now we're ready to uh, install the hoses. Let's get the hoses on here, at least the lower hose. The upper hose we'll probably put back on after we have the fan shroud in. Now the factory Ford hoses come with these little clamp clamps that are real, they're really difficult to work with. Uh, I know that, I'm sure that, the, that, that, that on the, when they assemble this thing at the factory it's because of speed and expense. Basically there's a little hook on here that grabs and they'll stay unsprung on the shelf until they're ready to, uh, the, until it comes down the assembly line. I would suggest that you, when you replace your hoses, uh, replace the clamps also with a, with a normal uh, uh, type, screw type hose clamp. It'll work a whole lot better. Now, there's two different types of upper radiator hoses for this truck. There's the one that goes behind the belt and there's the one that goes in front of the belt. The lower radiator hoses, they're all pretty much standard. But we bought these both at Napa, you know, 15, 16 bucks a piece. And, but let me show you what the difference is between these two. Come on over to the truck, let's take a look. Now the factory radiator hose runs like this. The belt goes around the outside of it. And uh, as a result, if you ever have to replace the belt, if you're ever in a situation where uh, you have to remove the belt and replace it on the side of the road, you're going to have to take this belt loose. This, I mean, this hose loose. This hose has to come out because the, the, the belt is wrapped around it. The good thing about this design is, and, and is that if the belt comes apart, it starts slinging around, it won't take the hose with it. But I'm sure that the Ford engineers that designed this particular item didn't do it for that reason. They could, for the same length of hose as the long hose, they could get more hoses. So it comes down to a, costing, a cost analysis. The, 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 the factory hose and the aftermarket hoses, like from Napa, go around the other direction, you see. They sit out here in a, a special slot that's designed for them, and I suggest that when you do install it, you put a zip tie on it, but you see it actually goes around the outside of the belt. So if you need to change the belt, if you need to change the belt, you can do it without removing the radiator hose. That's a good thing. The bad thing about this is, is that if this belt starts to separate and come apart, it's going to slice this hose right here in this spot. So uh, it's, it's discretionary if, if to, the, to the customer and the installer about which way they would want to go with this upper radiator hose. Ford actually has both hoses. Now next step we've got to do, we've got to replace this upper pulley. Remember we determined in our uh, analysis earlier that the upper pulley is no good. So we we'll go ahead and change this pulley out before we reinstall the belt. She wrenched going the right way. The bearing, you want to check your bearings in here when you when you uh, the bearing in this particular one has failed, it's no good. Or it's about to fail. So we want to replace it with a new part, Ford part. This 
it's not necessary that you replace this these pulleys with the water pump unless they are showing wear and tear. Check a pulley by deflecting it back and forth this way, this way and this way. If the bearing gives, if there's any slackness in the bearing, then you need to replace the uh, need to replace the uh, the pulley. Uh, you got to understand that the drive belt on this on this particular vehicle runs your power steering, it runs your alternator, it runs your air conditioning, and it runs your water pump. That means that if you lose this belt and it ceases to function, then you're going to lose your brakes and your steering from your power steering. If you have hydro boost, well, and, 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 and if you lose a belt on a truck that does not have hydro boost, it has a vacuum pump, so the vacuum pump won't be running. Uh, you want to make sure that the belt's in good shape and that the pulleys are in good shape, because if they fail, it'll stick you by the side of the road.